Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Welcome to the session of Managerial Economics. I am Dr. Supriya Jain working as an assistant professor in the Institute of Business Management at GLA University, Matra. So, let us look at the topics which we have covered in our previous session. We have talked about business cycle and we have seen that business cycle refers to the up and down movements of economic acti activities taking place in the economy refers to as business cycle. And these up and down movements are be, uh, usually been measured in terms of GDP or GNP. So, whenever there is a change taking place in the economy, right, regarding the economic activities, we usually refer it that happens due to the change in the business cycle. And to understand the phases of business cycle, we have talked about that uh, we have studied it into four different phases. We have expansion phase, uh, you know, peak phase, then we have contraction phase, and we have trough phase. So, expansion phase as we all know is a desirable phase for the consumers as well as for the producer because during this phase the demand in the economy increases, investment increases which increases the uh, you know uh, employment opportunities in the economy and when employment increases income of the consumer increases which further leads to the increase in demand. Right, so everything increases in this expansion phase, and whenever this increase taking place, economy reaches to the point where further expansion is not possible, and we reach to the highest point, which is known as peak. Now, after this point, economy will face a downward turn. Right, slowly the things goes down. Right, and that happens because of again when uh, we reach to the level of full employment. Right, when the factors of production cost increases, which increases the cost of production. Right, and with this increase in the cost of production, maybe uh, you know prices will increase, and when the increase in the prices will take place, uh, then again this increase in the prices will affect the demand in the economy. Right, so this is a kind of a circle and the synchronization effect which we uh, you know usually see in the economy. So that happens in the contraction phase where the demand decreases. And when the demand of the product decreases, production goes down with the decrease in the production, there is an increase in the unemployment rate. Uh, therefore, the income which people were earning earlier will not be able to earn income much and further they will demand less, right. So, we reach to the point where uh, you know further contraction is not possible and that point is called as trough. Now, again the economy will see an upward turning phase and uh, it will try to recover, right. So, these are the different phases which takes place in the economic uh, activities which is also known as business cycle or we also call them as a trade cycle. So, importance of these phases we have discussed and we have also understood that if the economy is going, right, if, if you are going up, uh, this is the basic law of nature, right. If something is going up, then it is bound to go down and that happens again in the case of economic activities also. And what happened during these phases, those effects uh, we have covered, right. What happened during the expansion phase as we have seen whenever there is an expansion taking place in the economy, then two things usually comes that is the inflation and the competition, right. Because this expansion phase will increase the demand of the commodity. And with the increase in the demand of commodity, there will always be increase in the prices, right. Money supply in the market will increase, where which will increase the, uh, you know, prices of the commodity, which leads to inflation, right. So, we also used to say that the inflation is the indicator of growth or you can say inflation is the byproduct of expansion, uh, right. And we have also seen the effect of contraction phase, like if when the economy goes down, then economy has to face the situation of opposite to inflation, we have deflation. When there is a lesser demand in the market, then price of commodity reduces. Suppliers try to, uh, you know, reduce their prices of the commodity so that they can stimulate the demand or they can, uh, you know, uh, at least will be able to, uh, you will be able to survive in the market, right. And because of this contraction phase, we have also seen that some of the supplier who have reduced their products. Uh, in, in excessive quantity. So, they face the problem of excessive inventory, which is again a problem, right. Now, they have to maintain this in excessive inventory, which has already been there with them, 
and, and, and usually in the contraction phase retrenchments also take place because there is a lesser demand in the market, uh, producer needs to produce less and they require lesser factors of production uh, which retrench people from the organization, right. And then uh, lastly we have talked about uh, the controlling factors, right, what controlling measures can be taken up to, uh, you know, minimize the effect, definitely we cannot uh, stop these phases to come or uh, to happen, right, but what all uh, can be done is to take preventive measures so that the minimizing effect can be taken up, right. So, there are some precautionary measures which are taken up by the firms because firms are the main and then definitely as we know government is responsible for taking care of whatever the changes taking place in the economy. Therefore, government also plays a very important role and they try to control the effect of this, uh, these cycles taking place in the economy by the way of monetary and fiscal policy. So, this was our discussion which we have done in our previous class and uh, why I have explained this all you in detail because here in this lecture we are going to talk about the theories uh, behind this business cycle, why uh, the economy goes into the expansion phase and how this contraction phase appears, right. So, those theories will help you to get the uh, clear understanding of reasons behind the cycles of business, right, or the theories of, uh, you know, th you can say that these are the theories of trade cycle, uh, which will help you to understand the causes, okay. So, let us look at the learning objective of our today's class, where you will be able to examine the intricacies of business cycle and causes of such cycle, right. So, this is uh, important for us to know how this business cycle takes place and why we move from the expansion to the contraction phase, right, and how this, uh, you know, expansion or the reco recovery phase comes again. So, here you will be able to develop a critical understanding of the various theories of business cycle. So, let us start with the very first theory, uh, okay, before we start with the theories, let me tell you what all theories we are going to uh, cover here. Uh, we will start with the hot ray monetary theory of business cycle, then we will talk about the innovation theory which is given by Schimpeter, then there is a theory given by Keynes, we have fixed theory of business cycle, then we have Summelson theory of business cycle, we have this Cobb web theory. So, let us begin with the very first theory, we have this hot ray monetary theory of business cycle, right. So, uh, this is the theory given, uh, you know, uh, with the name, uh, the person who has made out this study names are named as Hotray, right. He believes that uh, the business cycle, the changes in the business cycle taking place because of uh, the money supply in the economy. So, let us start and understand his view of, uh, you know, explaining the changes in the business cycle. So, as we know according to him, monetary policies plays a critical role in the depression, right. Whenever there is a depression in the economy, then these monetary policies plays a very important role, the supply of money plays a very important role. So, this theory is basically the product of supply of money and the expansion of credit and, uh, and definitely we need to understand that from where the supply of money is going to come. The supply of money is basically uh, the generation of credit by the banking system in the economy, right. So, this expansion of credit and the other money supply instruments creates a cumulative process of expansion which, uh, you know, in return increases the aggregate demand, right. Whenever there is a more supply in the market, then there is more, uh, you know, demand in the market because people are having more money, they have more income and with this higher income with them, they will demand more of the goods, they, they will demand more of the services which will create the another effect where in case, uh, when, where in return, uh, you know, aggregate demand of the economy will increase, everybody will demand more of goods and services. So, according to this theory, the only cause of fluctuation in the business is due to the instability of bank credit, right. So, this theory believes that because of the instability of bank credit, uh, whatever the changes are taking place, that happens, right. So, it can be concluded that hot ray theory of business cycle is basically depending upon the money supply, bank credits and the rate of interest, right. So, let me explain you this theory in detail, how we are going to go with this theory and what are the assumptions of the theory, right. How Hattray try to explain the situations related to the supply of money and the supply of money is being, uh, you know, usually created by the bank, 
right and how the bank changes their rate of interest which affects the uh, you know different phases in the economy. So, we have some assumptions for this theory, let us look at those assumptions first. Firstly, we are saying that consumer total expenditure comprises expenditure on consumption and investment. So, this is one thing we have assumed that whatever the uh, you know consumers are earning, they are spending it on their uh, you know consumption of either investment of goods or the consumption of goods of services. So, their expenditure divided into two things, one is the consumption or the other is the investment. Secondly, we are saying that consumers total outlay is the total money income of community, right? whatever the income has been generated in the society. So, that is equals to the consumers outlay, the outlay is the expenditure, right? whatever the consumers are earning, they are spending it either on the consumption of goods or services or the investments. right? And here we also consider that the stock market is very sensitive, lot of changes are taking place. And here we also assume that bank credit plays an important role in the money supply, right. So, this theory is basically on the belief of supply of money in the market and the supply of money is being created through the banking system and because of the change in the rate of interest, this expansion and the contraction phases used to happen. So, now if you look and understand uh, the effects of business cycle during the due to this hot race. Uh, understanding right what we are saying here whenever the expansion phase is taking place as we know that this is the phase where the economy is going up right and economy is moving to the upper side so what he believes that whenever the bank uh, banking system have more of the deposits right when they have more reserves of cash with them so what they usually prefer they prefer to give loan to the people right so and for definitely for providing loans to the people they have to reduce the rate of interest Right. So, what happened during the expansion phase because uh, people deposits more of their money into the bank as we all know uh, consumers the income which they are earning they spend it either on the consumption of goods and rest of the income they are spending on the investment and how they are going to make this investment they are going to make this investment in the financial institutions. So, definitely financial institutions will have more money with them they have more reserves with them. So, with this more money what they will do we have already discussed this in the circular flow of economic activities and income right. So, this financial sector will try to invest their money in the firms in the in, in that particular sector. So, what they will do to attract more uh, firms towards this money they reduce this rate of interest and when there is a reduction in the rate of interest people will demand more of the capital from the bank they will avail more loan facility. And with this more availment of loan facility, they will try to increase their inventory stock or they try to increase their size of capital, right. So, when the size of capital will increase, they will invest more into their business, the production will go up, right. And this has been done by uh, all the people in the economy, right, all the producers in the economy because here the demand is more, uh, the loan which they are getting from the banking institutions, they are getting it on a lesser rate of interest and because of this they would like to uh, take that loan facility and they will invest more into their business and when the investment in the business increases the increase there will be an increase in the production right and then when there is an increase in the production take place the demand for factors of production will increase right everybody will demand them more because of the production of goods and services you require factors of production the demand for land will increase, the demand for capital will increase, demand for labor will increase, right. And there will be a point when we will reach to the full employment, right. When, when economies, all the resources will reach to the full, full employment stage. And when we will reach to this full employment stage, then what will happen? The uh, price of these factors of production will increase. With the further increase in the investment, the price of these factors of production will increase. Now, what will happen because of increase in the price of production, uh, you know the price of goods will increase and when uh, there is an increase in the price supplier would like to uh, you know supply more because that will help them to generate more profit in the economy, right. So, basically looking at all these aspects when everything is increasing in the economy, investment is increasing, employment uh, you know rate is increasing, uh, prices are increasing, profit of the suppliers are also increasing. So, we will reach up to the point when uh, where there will be a peak situation, right. Economy will 
uh, reach to this peak point. Now, what will happen when uh, you know price will increase and profit will increase? But uh, here you can see that uh, the demand of capital is continuously increasing because of the increase uh, decrease in the rate of interest. But now, as because everybody is trying to expand their size of business, the reserves with the bank will go down, right? Whatever the deposits they were having, they will reduce. Now, what will happen? These banking institutions are going to reduce their rate of interest. Uh, sorry, they will increase their rate of interest. The rate of interest which they have reduced during the expansion phase because they want uh, people to invest more or they want to give more uh, loan facilities to the people. Now, when this peak situation will come, when everybody will demand for more uh, loan from the banking institution, now they will increase their rate of interest, right? Now, when the rate of interest will increase, okay, now the, uh, you know, firms or the producer will demand less capital, okay, they will take lend, uh, less loan facility because this rate of increase in the interest will increase their, uh, you know, uh, loan on, you know, uh, they, they, this rate of increase. Uh, will create a pressure on the firms because now their production cost will increase because now they are getting the capital at the higher rate of interest and all the other factors also like land, like labor, their demand has also increased and because of that their cost, uh, their, uh, these factors production cost will also increase. So, this will all increase the cost of production for them, right? And this will reduce their profit margin. And because the investment goes down, because of the increase in the rate of interest, the producer will produce less. And when there will be a less production taking place, the unemployment rate will increase. When unemployment rate will increase, people were not able to earn income, right? They are left with lesser income. And when there is a lesser income in the, dem in, in the economy, then definitely the lesser demand will be there. So, definitely after this peak point, we gradually move to the recession and when these things continue happens, will reach to the position of depression, right? So, this is how this money supply in the economy causes this expansion and the contraction phases to happen, right? And with this hot rate theory, we are believing that it happens because of supply of money in the market and the supply of money in the market is the creation of bank, right? How banking institutions are providing these facilities, right? So, we have understood it very carefully that during the expansion phase, these banking institutions are reducing their rate of interest so that they would be able to give uh, more loan to the, uh, you know, to the firms so that uh, they will get the benefit and when the demand for the capital increases in the market, they increase the price of these interest and gradually we will get into the phase of recession and uh, depression, right? And this uh, here we will going to reach up to this a tough point when these things continue to happen. Now, here when, you, when we have seen uh, the economy is going downward and the producers are not going to get any benefits. Now, there comes the role of the government. As we all know, government is responsible to take care of whatever the changes are taking place. So, here uh, rather private, uh, you know, in, in, uh, producers are not going to invest their money. Government will come and invest their money and they will try to generate employment opportunities in the economy so that the income uh, will be there for the people and with this income they would be able to demand goods and services. So, gradually after this trough, this recovery phase will take place, right? So, I hope the interaction of this theory is clear to every one of you where we have understood uh, with this understanding of hot ray, how the supply of money and the bank created, uh, you know, credit facilities will affect the uh, business cycle during the expansion and the contraction phases. Now, looking further, we have some of the criticisms of the theory as well, right? Uh, although we have tried to understand why these phases of expansion and contraction takes place, but this theory do have certain limitations. So, what are those criticisms of this theory? Uh, first, we are saying that Hodre neglected the role of non-monetary factors like prosperous agriculture, inventions, rate of profit and stock of capital. This theory is only based on the belief that uh, the, the, this, this is happening because of monetary reasons, right? Because of the money supply in the market. So, one thing they are ignoring is the non-monetary factor. So, again, this is a criticism against this theory. Secondly, it's only concentrate on the supply of money, right? Which is not the only factor, right? When we talk about the economy as a whole, when we are including all the macroeconomic variables, so we cannot look at only one factor and to relate the things accordingly. Third point says that interest increase in the interest rate is not 
only due to the economic prosperity, but that happens also because of the other factors. Like we have seen uh, during the peak phase when there was uh, more investment taking place in the economy, bank increases uh, the rate of interest. So that is how we understood the th this theory and related this theory, but that is not always true, right? Increase in the interest rate is not always because of the, uh, you know, economic prosperity. It can also because of the other factors which are not being studied here in this theory. Uh, the next point says that over emphasis on the role of wholesaler, right? Here we are emphasizing more on the uh, role of wholesalers or the producer, the price at which they are purchasing and because of the change in the, uh, you know, demand and price or uh, income of the people that how it is going to affect. The next is too much confidence in the monetary policy. This theory uh, has a lot of belief in the monetary policy and that is the base actually we can say this is the assumption which they have made. Like this theory is based on the monetary policy and it also neglects the role of expectation, how people are expecting, how, how producers are expecting returns on their capital. So that has also not been taken here and it is an incomplete theory of trade cycle looking at the previous criticisms which we have discussed. We can conclude that, that this theory is an incomplete theory for the trade cycle, right? So this is one way where Hotter explain how the interaction of these phases taking place in the business cycle. Now let us look at the another theory which is called as innovation theory, right? Now like I said this innovation theory is given by Scum Peter and with this belief we are going to talk about this theory where Scum Peter says that uh, the phases taking place in the business cycle or the return which a producer is going to get that is based on the innovation, right? The way you are going to innovate your product and the more the inventions or innovations you are bringing in your product, there will be a change taking place, right? So innovation theory of business cycle is invented by American economist known as Joseph Scumpeter and according to this theory, the main cause of business cycles are the innovation. And to understand this innovation better, here we have uh, five uh, type of innovations we have classified into innovation can be of different type like introduction of new type of product, right? If you are introducing a new type of product into the market which was not there uh, earlier, right? So that is being considered to be as an innovation. Second is if you are introducing a new technique of a product, new way of developing that production, right? So then also it will be considered as an innovation. Discovery of a new market, right? Earlier you were, uh, you know, supplying your product in a, a specific market. Now you have explored the another market for your product. Maybe uh, earlier you were, explore, you know, selling your product in, in your country only. But now you have explored the other market in the other countries where your product demand will be there and you will be able to sell your product, right? So discovery of new market is also a consideration of innovation. Then finding a new source of raw material, right? If you have find it out that there can be a different source of uh, raw material which can be used, which is not being explored by anybody else and this source of raw material might help you to reduce your cost and to increase your uh, output base, right? So that is also a kind of innovation which we consider. And lastly, changing in the organization of industry, right? If you are able to change the organization of industry, like we have discussed, right? Oligopoly firms who are very few in the market, when they come together, they can make a cartel, right? They can work together and they can enjoy the power of monopoly in the market. So if you are able to make a change in the, uh, you know, uh, organization structure or the uh, structure of the industry, then also we consider it as an innovation where two firms join together, right? They merge with each other or uh, they acquire, one firm acquires the another firm. So if that kind of a change is taking place in the economy, then also we can consider them um, as an example of innovation. So in short, what we are saying as per this theory, we are considering that uh, the phases which are taking place in the economy that happens because of the uh, expansions, uh, because of the innovations in the economy and the innovations can be of different types and here we have classified that into five different categories. Now moving further, <coughs> looking at how this innovation affects the phases of business cycle. So again here we have these uh, business cycle phases. So as you know, this is the expansion phase when the economy goes up and then we reach to the highest point where we have peak, uh, then slowly this recession comes and if it will continue 
to take place, we are into this diffraction phase, we reach to the lowest point which is called as trough and then again there is a uh, turning point which is called as recovery. Now, looking at this innovation, right? whenever there will be an innovation taking place in the economy, definitely uh, you know consumer will uh, like to accept that product. Okay, if, if you have understood the need of the customer and based on the need of the customer, if something has been innovated, right? So, definitely it will help the increase in the demand of that commodity. And when the demand of that commodity will increase, what will happen? The new uh, suppliers will also try to imitate that innovation or they try to copy that innovation, right? Because there will be an increased demand in the market. Now, looking at the increased demand in the market, the demand for factors of production will increase because again uh, they will try to produce more, right? And when this factors of production cost will increase, that will increase, uh, you know, their pro profit pricing also, right? The product price will increase and when uh, this uh, production will increase, this will increase uh, more of employment in the uh, economy, right? Employment will increase. And with the increase in the employment, the income of the consumer is increasing. See, here we are looking at the synchronization effect. Everything is connected. If one thing will increase, that will lead to the another and that will lead to the further another variable, right? So, with the increase in the income, the demand of the goods and services will increase, right? And with the increase in the demand, the price of that commodity will increase because demand will increase the price and with the higher price suppliers would like to supply more again in the market, right. So, definitely we will again reach to the point uh, where we will have the highest expansion taking place and uh, you know up reaching up to this point further expansion is not possible, right. So, now when the big, uh, product is becoming popular to everybody and that innovation effect has been stopped, right. Now, people are not getting any, uh, you know, a new charm in finding, uh, you know, or in buying that commodity. So, then def definitely there will be a reduction in demand, right. And when there is a reduction in demand, then the supplier will produce lesser product, okay. They will reduce their production. When the production will be reduced, then unemployment rate will be increased. When unemployment rate will increase, income in the market will go down, right. People will earn less income and when there will be a lesser income, again there will be uh, you know lesser demand and when there will be a lesser demand then definitely the price of goods will go down. So, again this recession and the depression phase will take place in the economy because of the innovation we are talking about, right. So, innovation is what? Innovation when you bring something new that boost up the demand in the market, right and when, the beco when it becomes popular in the market, when people have started using it, they does not want, uh, they, they, they does not find anything, uh, you know, new to it then definitely the demand of that commodity slowly goes down. So, here comes the effect of innovation to understand the changes taking place in the business cycle, right. And if we want uh, this to happen again, then we continuously need to involve ourselves in this innovation activities where we try to bring something new and that is why we have seen that in today's time the companies are spending lot of money on the research and development of the product so that they can uh, continuously explore some new things and new areas for boosting up the demand in the economy and where they would be able to earn higher profit margins, right. So, uh, let us uh, look at the criticism of this theory of innovation, right, uh, how this uh, innovation theory uh, is been criticized based on the assumptions. The first is that innovation fails to explain the period of boom and depression, yes that is for sure. We are definitely trying to understand how this expansion phase and there is a depression phase takes place in the economy, but the period, how long this period will be, right? How long people will uh, think like this is an innovation or new thing they are getting into the market. So, this period of, uh, you know, clarity is not there, okay? Then innovation may be a major factor of investments and economic activities, but not a complete process of trade cycle, yes. Innovation is definitely going to affect the factor of investment because if the product is being liked by the people, right. So, definitely there will be more demand and then more producers will enter into the market and there will be more investments in the uh, and then economic activities will also increase, but that does not gives you a complete process of the trade, okay. So, this is what has been ignored in this theory. Then third point says that the theory is based on the assumption that every new innovation is financed by the bank, right, and the other credit institution, but this cannot be taken as granted because bank finances only for the short term loans and the investment. So, again, uh, you know, the period which we were talking about earlier, 
is not clear because uh, we assume that whatever the capital we are raising, whatever the uh, loans we are taking that has been provided by the banking institution and they usually provide it for the shorter period of time. So, this is uh, the theory which has been discussed on the basis of innovation. So, now let us talk about the Keynesian theory of business cycle, let us have a look how Keynes explain this theory, right. Uh, what is the factors which in uh, which motivates the producer to invest in the economy. So, according to Keynes marginal efficiency of capital this plays a very important role and depends on uh, the marginal efficiency of capital uh, they make their investment and this marginal efficiency of capital depends upon the change in the prospective yield and the supply price of capital goods. Now, looking at this you can understand that the determinants of private investments right whenever a pi private individual firms make their investments in the economy that usually depends upon two things. One is the marginal efficiency of capital and second is the rate of interest. So, here we are not talking about rate of interest and rate of interest is basically a term which is used for the shorter period of time right. Uh, what will be the rate of interest uh, on the loan provided by the firm. So, they usually make their investment based on the marginal efficiency of capital what return are they going to get uh, of the investments which they are going to make right. And again as you see that marginal efficiency of capital based on two things. One is the product, uh, prospective income from the capital asset what you are going to earn from it and second is the supply price of the capital asset. So, again the supply price of capital asset we assume it to be constant here and we are considering that marginal efficiency of capital based on the return which it is going to provide to you right and this return is equals to the marginal revenue productivity of capital minus variable cost right. So, how much you will be able to get return out of the investments which you are making in the economy based on that theory uh, we are going to understand how this business cycle changes or how uh, the effect of these business cycle we are going to understand right. So, again let us have this look on the business cycle phases right. So, what we are seeing that marginal efficiency of capital and marginal efficiency of capital as we have seen based on the return it is going to provide. So, when we talk about this expansion phase right we also know that in the in the expansion phase the demand for goods and services are already there people are demanding more of goods and services. So, because of this increase in the demand of goods and services now the producer will invest more because they know that the marginal efficiency of their capital will be more in this phase they would be getting higher returns because of the higher demands in the market. So, here already the demand is high now this higher demand will attract more uh, producers to the market where they will make investments they will uh, you know make more of the investments and when there will be more investors in the market the production will increase. Now, again the effects will be same when the production will increase economy will reach to the full employment phase right and when we will reach to the full employment stage the factor cost the, the price of these factor uh, cost will increase the demand for land will increase demand for uh, you know labor will increase demand for raw material will increase and this increase in the demand will further increase the price of the production or you can say the cost of production right and when the cost of production will increase definitely the producers are forced to increase the uh, price, but when the production has increased it has also increased the employment rate in the economy right when when the producer will produce more of goods and services and where there will be more demand for labor then definitely the employment rate will increase which will further increase the income right and with this increase income people will demand more of goods and services ok. So, with the increase in the demand for goods and services price will increase. So, price has been increased because of two factor one is the increase in the demand of those goods and services second is because of increase in the factors of production right. So, definitely this increased price is a stimulating factor for the producers right they want to supply more on the higher prices though they will definitely try to sell more and more during this period of time right. So, definitely what we are uh, talking here is because of the investments because of the return which they are expecting from their investments they will invest more during the phase and this investments will continue uh, to happen uh, till the economy reach to the peak phase where the further expansion is not possible. Now, when we are at the peak phase when the economy reaches this peak phase what will happen now economy will see the downward turning point. 
right and why this downward turning point takes place because suddenly when the price of commodities will increase and this inflation comes into the economy there might be a possibility where the demand will go down right and when the demand will decrease in the economy then definitely these producers will invest less right they they they, they does not want to invest much of their money because they will not uh, you know expecting much returns from the market when the economy goes down when uh, the demand from the uh, consumers started decreasing right their investments will go down and when their investments will go down the production of goods and services will also reduce right when the production of goods and services will reduce then that will uh, increase the unemployment rate right when unemployment rate will be increased the lesser income will be there with the people with this lesser income they will demand further lesser so slowly our economy will get into this depression phase from the recession and uh, slowly and gradually will reach to the lowest point which is called as trough right so again we have seen this uh, you know pattern of uh, expansion and contraction taking place in the economy because of change in the investments and this change in the investments like i said based on the marginal efficiency of the capital and this marginal efficiency of capital is basically the expectations of the uh, you know investors what uh, return are they going to get from their investment so during the expansion phase they are optimistic right they, they expect higher returns on their investment so they invest more in the economy which leads the economy to reach up to the peak point whereas this recession phase is the phase where there is lesser demand in the economy so they are not very sure how much return they are going to get from their investment so they try to invest less money right or they, they, they try to take out their investments from the market by reducing the production capacity right so definitely the economy will reach to the trough point so here you can see that uh, the lot of changes are taking place because of the investment made by the private firms here when we reach to the trough point again the role of government will come where they are going to make the investment which is known as autonomous investments right because here the government try to uh, make investments in the economy which will help in increase in the employment opportunities because that investment will increase the production and that production will be taken up by the people of the economy because of that the demand for factors of production will increase and when there will be a increase in demand uh, gradually these private firms will also enter uh, into the market and start making their investments to capture that demand right so again with this effect of investments taking place in the economy affects the cycles of business right now let us look at the explanation right whatever we have talked about under this theory right we are, we are saying that economy is in slump there is a shortage of capital goods whenever there is a slump taking place slump is the another name we call for the trough so there will always be a shortage of capital goods and the autonomous say say in the form of the government expenditure helps the economy to recover like i said when our economy reach to this slump point when we are at the trough point private investors does not want to make their investment because they are not expecting much return on their capital so at that point of time government will come and make this autonomous investment autonomous investment is basically the investment which is done uh, for the betterment of the economy for the development of the economy rather than to earn profit whereas private individuals are making investments or private firms are making their investment with the expectations of getting return out of it right secondly we are saying for this theory a unit increase in investment will bring about a multiplier times right this will uh, bring the effect of multiplier like when one is going to invest the others investments will also increase other other supplier will also come and invest their money because uh, of the increase in demand in the market so uh, the investment is multiplying right uh, it is growing like that anything in the market so which increases the income and employment in the economy and this upward turning point recovering the economy from depression and putting it on the path of expansion right so here when we have seen that government has taken up this responsibility of autonomous investments so gradually our economy move to the recovery phase and when we are into this recovery phase the investment investors will uh, understand the demand in the economy and to uh, uh, take up that demand they enter into the economy which leads the economy to the expansion phase again so here we have multiplier effect also and multiplier is what multiplier is the measure of effect of capital investments on the total income we basically understand this multiplier with the uh, you know k and what we say what change in the income takes place because of change in the 
investment right how how much the income of the consumer will change because of change in the investment right if there will be a uh, investment making place in the economy then how the income of the consumer is going to change right so that effect is been studied under this multiplier and this investment can be made by the government during the recovery phase during the you know slump period the autonomous investment we call it right so this is how we understand this theory of keynes which is based on the marginal efficiency of capital right so if we talk about the first three theories which we have talked about the very first theory which was given by hotre he believes that the business cycle is basically uh, or the phases of business cycle takes place basically because of the supply of money in the market right uh, if there will be a more supply in the market then economy will be an expansion phase because here the bank supply bank make this supplies available to the people at the lower rate of interest and after the period of time when there will be more demand for these capital they will increase this interest rate and which will reduce the investments in the market right second theory which is given by scumpeter he believes that uh, the business cycles taking place in the economy based on the innovation the more you will be able to innovate your product the more will be the demand and when there will be more demand in the economy more people will invest in the economy produce production of goods will increase and that will leads the economy to the expansion phase and when the product become uh, you know older uh, in the market when people are not having much demand for their product then this expansion phase takes place then we have talked about this keynes theory keynes theory says that this uh, effect is because of the economic efficiency of capital right how much efficiently you are going to get return how efficient returns are you going to get on the capital which you are investing because of this the investors make their investment decisions and accordingly the phases of expansion and contraction takes place in the economy now let us talk about this hicks theory right how this hicks hicks theory is going to help us relate the effects of this business cycle so again you can say that this hicks theory is given by j r hicks right he attributed the theory of business cycle by explaining the combined action of multiplier and accelerator right in our previous theory given by keynes they also talked about the multiplier effect like what change will take place in the income of the consumer because of change in the investments right so here in this hicks theory we are going to understand the effect of multiplier and accelerator together so now to make it more clear for all of you what is meant by multiplier multiplier is basically the change in the income to the change in the investment like i said we denote it with k so whatever the change has been taken place in the income income is denoted y y because of change in the investment taking place in the economy suppose if there is a change of 100 crores of investment taking place in the economy and because of this change in the investment of 100 crores increases the 200 crores of income of the people so here the multiplier will be 2 right so this is how we calculate this multiplier how much change is going to take place in the income of the consumer because of change in the investments in the economy and then we have this accelerator and the value of accelerator with denotes with v right and how we are calculating this accelerator it is basically the change in investment due to the change in the con uh, consumption so whatever change will be taking place in the investment right uh, because of the change in the consumption because people when uh, increase their consumption in the economy the demand for goods and service will increase and because of increase in the demand for those goods and services the investment will also increase producer would like to invest more so here we have this effect of multiplier and accelerator which we are combining together for our study so we can say that we have this change in income because of uh, you know change in investment uh, investment and change in investment because of change in the consumption so these are the four things which are been combined together for this study and they are all related with each other because when the consumption of goods and services will increase the investment will increase when the investment will increase it will increase the income of the consumer because of that the income will increase and income will increase further the consumption of goods and services so you can see how the effect of this uh, multiplier or accelerator are interrelated with each other now let us look uh, at this theory and we are saying that this theory is based on warranted rate of growth induced and autonomous investment and it is based on multiplier and accelerator right what is meant by the warranted rate of growth and induced and autonomous investment and we have also talked about multiplier and accelerator let us look at it 
According to Hicks, uh, there are two types of investment. One is known as autonomous investment and the other is called as induced investment. Like I said in our previous discussion also, autonomous investment is usually done by the government and this investment is done with the motive of not to earn profit, right. Here the government motive is not to earn profit on this investment. Their motive is to bring prosperity in the economy because economy is um, in, in the downward phase where the, uh, you know, private individuals are not ready to make the investment. So, government make the initiative where they come up with the autonomous investment without any expectations of profit returns. Whereas, induced investments are those investments which are made uh, with the expectations of return on it and you, that is usually being made by the private firms, right? Because whatever the investments they are making, they are always looking for the profits or return on their investment. So, autonomous investments which uh, to Hicks represent the growth factor due to the increase in the population as well as in the progress of technology plays an important role in the determination of trade cycle. So, whatever the changes are taking place because of these investments pattern in the economy will change the pattern of uh, trade cycle, right, moving from expansion to the contraction phase. So, here we have this, uh, you know, chart will help you to understand how we are relating this effect of multiplier and accelerator to understand the growth taking place, right. So, here on the x axis we have time, whereas on the y axis we are representing the output and the investments, right. So, look at this, uh, these lines, how we are explaining these lines, AA is basically the autonomous investment, right. You can say that this AA shows the path of autonomous investment growing at the constant rate, right, whenever there will be a, uh, you know, a, a lowest point taking place in the economy. So, here this line represents the autonomous investments which is uh, made by the government and this investment is being made without the expectations of getting return on it. Then what is meant by this LL line, LL line is basically the lower equilibrium, right, or this is you can say this is the lower equilibrium point. Uh, besides this point, the further, uh, you know, slump or uh, trough is not possible, right. Reaching up to this point is the highest, uh, you know, lowest point. Uh, besides this point, this, uh, you know, contraction is not possible. So, this LL line denotes that. E is basically the point where economy is in equilibrium, right. E is the equilibrium point where the level of output depends upon the autonomous investments made in the economy. And then is FF line is the full employment, right, this is the ceiling, right, right, where further expansion is not possible, right, this is the highest point, like we have ceiling of a room and we have floor of the room, so ceiling point is the, uh, you know, lowest point which we are denoting here with LL and FF is the full employment uh, line which represents that uh, the further expansion beyond this point is not possible. Now, what happens, let us start from this point where our economy is in equilibrium, right, when the economy is in equilibrium. And at this point, when the investments increases in the economy, right, and this leads to the increase in the production of goods and services, which increase in the employment rate, right, which leads to the increase in the income of the people, right, which increases the demand for goods and services, right, which increases the price, price increases the profit for the firms. So, uh, again, our economy will go to the upward phase, right. So, here you can say that from point P, uh, o, we started from P O and then we reached to this point which is called as P 1, right. So, we reach up to that higher point and during, uh, for a period of time we remains there, right. So, here we are reaching from P 1 to P 2 because this further expansion is not possible, we are at the highest point and all the investments which are supposed to be made are already been done. Now, what will happen from this point, the economy will go down looking at when the investments reduces in the economy, when the demand for goods and services reduce, then investments will reduce and when the, these investments will reduce, production of goods and services will go down, which will increase the unemployment rate, income of the people will be less and because of lesser income, uh, people will be able to demand less of goods and services. So, that gradually what will happen, we will move from this point P to P3, which represents the, uh, you know, contraction phase. Whereas, or you can call it as a recession as well and then we move from P3 to Q point where our economy is going into depression, right. And for the period of time, we remain here uh, into this depression phase and then again this autonomous investment takes place, right. 
where the uh, where this uh, government will come and make this autonomous investment and slowly our economy will get into this recovery phase. So, how uh, with the interaction of this investment taking place in the economy and the effect of multiplier and accelerator, what impact will be there in the income of the consumer because of a change in the investment and what change will be take place in the investment because of change in the consumption of goods and services that is what is basically been explained by the Higgs through his theory. right? Now, if you look at the criticisms of the theory, again this theory has certain criticisms uh, that first point says that there are wrong assumptions of the constant multiplier accelerator coefficient. Okay. So, whatever the study has been made is been made on the combination or the interaction of multiplier and accelerator and sometimes uh, you know this theory has a wrong assumption. Uh, of constant multiplier and accelerator coefficient, which is not true in the real sense. Another criticism says that highly mechanical and mathematical device, right. Here to understand the business cycle, we are using mechanical and mathematical device, which is not a right measures to do. Then we are saying wrong assumption of non excess capacity. We, we assume with this theory that there is no access to the capacity, which is not right. We have set the margin that this is the lower. Uh, you know, uh, point way from uh, up, uh, with, without which we can are not able to increase the production, and we have also, uh, you know, assume that this is the highest point up to which we can go with the production. Okay, so this wrong assumption of no excess capacity is not the right assumption, uh, which we have done with this theory. And lastly, we are saying that full employment ceiling is not independent, right? Uh, when we reach to this uh, full employment stage of ceiling, when we are saying that economy is working on the full employment rate, this is not an independent aspect, you know, factor which we are studying independently. That is basically because of the effect of investments taking place or the effect of expansion taking place in the economy, right. It is not an independent variable. So, again, we do have certain criticisms for this theory also. Now, let us look at the another theory which is given by Sommelson, right. This is, this is the theory given by Sommelson and the innovation theory was given by Scumpeter, right. So, they are different from each other and given by different people. Professor Sommelson is an eminent economist to build a trade cycle model by again integrating the theory of multiplier and acceleration principle. So, if you look at this theory given by Sommelson, this is not much different from the previous theory which we have talked about, which is related to the Higgs, but yes. Higgs introduced uh, another three version of the theory where they have talked about the unwarranted rate of growth, where they have talked about autonomous investments and where we have also discussed the effect of multiplier and accelerator. But with the theory of Samuelson, we are only integrating the theory of multiplier and accelerator principle and to make you explain again what is multiplier and accelerator. Multiplier is basically helping us to understand the change in the income taking place because of change in the investments in the economy. Whereas, accelerator understand and, uh, or study the impact of change taking place in the investment because of change in the consumption taking place in the economy, right. So, according to this theory process of multiplier starts working when autonomous investments takes place, right. So, this change taking place because of the, um, or the multiplier effect starts in the economy when this autonomous uh, you know investment takes place and with this autonomous investments income of people rises, right, because this autonomous investments increase the production and production increase the employment opportunities, which increases the income of the people and when there is an increase in the people income, there will be an increase in the demand for consumer goods, right, and it will directly affect the marginal prosperity to consume, right, when there is a demand for more consumer goods and marginal uh, prop, uh, prop, uh, propensity to consume will also increase. Now, let us look at the criticism of this theory. There are few criticisms regarding this theory is that that this model is only concentrating on impact of multiplier and accelerator and it ignores the role of producers expectations, right. Here in this theory, we are only understanding how this multiplier and accelerator will affect uh, the phases taking place in the economy, but it ignores the producer expectation, it ignores the changing business requirement as well as the consumer preferences. So, there are different aspects which are needed to be there for these studies, but uh, because of this ignorance of these variable, this theory does not validate 
the true uh, picture of this business cycle right and it is not practically possible to compute the fact of multiplier and accelerator principle which we actually assumes right but in practical it is not possible right and it, it has wrong assumption of constant capital output ratio also so again uh, this theory is not very applicable because it has lot of ignorance in this theory and various variables are not been studied carefully right now let us uh, look at the another theory which help us to explain this business cycle and this is known as cobb webb theory now what is this theory relates with this has been uh, analyzed by uh, nicolas codler and he analyzed this model in 1934 where he gave the term known as cobb webb theorem now this cobb webb theorem is the idea that price fluctuation can lead to the fluctuation in supply which causes a cycle of rising and falling prices see this theory is not very practical theory and this is usually applicable to the farm products right and with this theory we are saying that because of change in the supply right whenever there is a change in the supply of commodity takes place their price effects and because of the change in the prices further their supply get affected so it is a kind of a cobb webb relations we study here regarding the supply and the price of those commodities and there is a simple thing we say we understand that when there will be more supply of the commodity in the market because of any reason the prices of those commodity will reduce and when the prices will reduce the supplier would not uh, prefer to sell that commodity because suppliers believes in the principles where they want to supply more of those commodities whose prices are high in the market so that they would be able to earn higher returns on them right so in a simple cobb webb model we assume there is an agricultural market so like i said this is applicable only to the agricultural market where the supply can vary uh, due to the variable factors such as weather right if the weather has a favorable conditions right so in that case the agriculture supply will be more during that we, during that year maybe and if the weather is not supported maybe the supply will be less so based on the supply of that commodity the prices will get affected suppose if somehow any product has a good supply in that particular year right so when the supply will be more then that def definitely the price of that commodity will go down and when the price of that commodity will go down the people will try to produce less of that commodity the farmers will produce less of that commodity right uh, they they'll, they'll try to produce some other good okay so that they would be able to get higher price on that commodity but anyhow when they reduce their production and other other farmers also reduce uh, producing that particular product then definitely next year the supply will reduce and when there will be a reduction in supply of that commodity because of lesser production taken place definitely the price of that commodity will increase right so <coughs> if you look at the assumption of this uh, theory where we are able to understand this theory better we need to have certain assumption so what we assume that in a agriculture market farmers have to decide how much to produce in a year in advance right they they uh, make their production decision in advance before they know what will be the market price right so accordingly they understand uh, the price of that commodity and they try to make their production and a key determinant of supply will be the price from the previous year what is the price of that commodity in the previous year accordingly they determine the quantity they would produce and a lower price will mean some farmers to go out of the business they would not want to produce that commodity and also lower price will discourage farmers to grow that crop in the next year and lastly we are saying that the demand for agriculture good is usually price elastic as we have understood this is the price elastic demand is there right a fall in the price only cause a smaller percentage increase in the demand right so let us look at the criticism also for this theory this is not strictly a trade cycle theory we are although studying it here but for its concern it is only related to the farming sector and secondly we are saying this theory assume that the output is solely governed by the government prices which is again not a true uh, you know assumptions which are been made so these are some criticisms we have for this theory so if you look at the topic for today we have talked about different theories uh, to understand the different phases of business cycle i hope it is all clear to every one of you different theories have been discussed based on different assumptions where and they also have their uh, different criticisms for these theory uh, this is all for today's class these are some reference books we have taken for this lecture that's all for today thank you all of you